Hi friends, it's Deanna Williston from Our Blooming Catholic Life and I'm finally getting to the Bible in a Year English Standard Version Catholic Edition by Augustine Institute. They sent us this book to review. Um, I'm going to try and get a decent review on this and then maybe I'll talk about some of the other Bible in a Year plans because it's completely different. Um, completely different. So let's go through here. It says it's your daily encounter with God. It has a Nihil Opsop and an Imprimatur from bishops in India. We talked about that when we talked about um, the English Standard Version translation they use, so we already have talked about that some. This book is copyrighted 2020, this particular Bible in a year Bible. Um, there's a big table of contents because they're welcoming you to this, talking about ways to use it, abbreviations for books of the Bible, alphabetical index to book of the Bible, forward to the English Standard Version Catholic Edition and the preface to the ESV Bible, introduction to the ESV Catholic Bi Edition Bible with deuterocanonical books. We talked about those three before because they really focus on the translation more than the Bible in a Year concept. So that video already exists. Go out and watch that if you'd like. Then there's an explanation of features and then we get into it. January, February, March, April, May, June, July, August, September, <laughs> October, November, December. And then there's a table of weight measures, which is the part that cracks me up. So welcome to a Bible in a year. There's no other book like the Bible. It is old by any standard, reaching back into the millennia, yet is still very much in demand and by far the most translated book in human history, continuously translated into new language and regularly translated afresh where it has been read for generations. Jesus himself spoke to the perennial power of the world word when he observed, heaven and earth will pass away, but my words will not pass away. Matthew 24, 35. No matter how often God is declared dead, his word is found to be living and active. Um, it's going on telling you a little bit more about the Bible in a year. Aha, let's jump in here. Rather than simply reading sequentially, from Genesis to Revelation, each day the reader is given readings from three distinct parts of the Bible, from the Old Testament, from wisdom literature, and the New Testament. Thus, there is never a day where your only reading will be a genealogical list of names or detailed instructions on Israel's sacrificial practices, but such readings will be supplemented with passages from other parts of the Bible. In addition to the scripture passages, each day's reading include a short reflection providing insight as a jumping off point from the scriptures into your own prayer and helping to put the word into action in your life. And this is in the note from Tim Gray, president of the Augustine Institute. Ways to use the Bible in a year. This is the next page, Roman numeral nine. Three ways they suggest using this. Um, you could use Bible in one year, once a day. Follow the plan, read each day's readings during your daily Bible reading time to finish the whole Bible in a year. Bible in one year, twice a day. Read each day's readings, but in two sittings. Read the Old Testament passage in the morning and the wisdom literature and New Testament readings in the evening, followed by the reflection. You could also do the Bible in two years. Go through once, reading the Old Testament readings in the first year and the wisdom literature and the New Testament readings in the second year. Key to success. Um, yeah, we're going to revisit those concepts later because it, the format of this particular Bible in a year makes one or the other a little better. Key to success, it's telling you a point in time and place. Make a date with the Lord. Not going to go on. The abbreviations they use, I'd say they're pretty standard. It kind of gives me a headache sometimes. The abbreviation is two, sometimes it's three, sometimes it's four. So the number of letters in their abbreviations aren't standard. I'm used to them being a little more standard, I feel like. That, <laughs> that's the, the worst thing in here. I go, ah. So it, it threw me off because like Proverbs is PRV instead of PR. So some of them just took me a minute to process because they're not the abbreviations I'm used to. It's as deep as that goes. Alphabetical index to the book of the Bible. This one I found really interesting. So A, Acts is the first book and it's June 19th through July 31st. Amos is November 23rd to the 25th. These are all easy to read. All these pages are super easy to read. You can see they're a little thin because you can see the page from before, but they're still pretty easy to read. Isn't it kind of funny though? You ever imagine you'd be looking up the book of the Bible by a day of the year? It's pretty funny. Forward. Oh, then we run into all the forwards. Let's see if we can skip ahead here. 
what is the format when you start? So it starts day one. There's no big giant header, no artwork. Let's, let's get to work, friends. So the day one is here at the beginning and it tells you it's the page number. Can you see that page number in the page one? That's, that's my real criticism of the book is the actual page numbers are really in there. So if you're working with someone, you're gonna probably wanna say the day or the, the date because um, the page numbers are really hard to see there in the inside. But day one is written fairly large, Genesis one, and then it starts out. Um, how is the Bible numbered? Again, they use the same normal tiny superscript verse numbers that we're used to. Again, remember ESV Bible translation. So when it comes, sorry, Catholic edition of that, when it comes to a verse that's not in the Protestant Bible, it might be an alphabet letter used instead of the numbering because that way you can, can keep consistent numbering with the ESV, the Protestant version to the Catholic edition. The Catholic edition is gonna switch over to the alphabet in the, those verses that have been whatever, not approved, removed, whatever words you choose to use. It's not an argument about that. This is about Bible in a year. So when it's the Catholic edition, only it's not in the Protestant version, it's gonna have an alphabet letter. Um, otherwise they're not obtrusive, but it does make it a little awkward because there are footnotes. The footnotes are kind of italic. They're again a superscript. Let me see, can you see this one here? Um, let there be an expanse. Can you see that tiny little number one there? And he's gonna refer you to a note down here. So, or a canopy. Also verses seven, eight, 14, 15, 17, and 20. So that must be telling you that's the way they translate that where they say an expanse it could also be canopy and that that little definition note is also going to be in verses 7 8 14 15 17 and 20. so let's look at verse 7. again it gets a little difficult because sometimes the verse letters are really close to the footnote numbers but the footnotes are in italic so just remember that so we're looking for seven um, and let there be an expanse in the midst of the waters and let it separate the waters from the waters. And God made the expanse. So anytime they say expanse, you could also use the word canopy because it's used again. And God made the expanse and separate the waters that were under the expanse from the waters that were above the expanse. Every time they say the word expanse in those passages, it could also be canopy. They're not 100% sure on that. Um, same thing happens with footnote three. Whatever it is could also be sky. Oh, and God called the expanse heaven. Heaven could also be sky. Also verses 9, 14, 17, 15. And that happens several times in here. So they do give you footnotes that are mainly seem to be translation clarifications, at least in the beginning. So day one, January one, we're doing Genesis one, Genesis two. Um, you don't have to worry about going to look it up or checking a separate paper because it's all here together. See, and then here is Psalm 1 and Matthew 1. And then we're going to be reading Matthew 1 and we come over and it ends here in this reflection box. So you know it's the reflection, not text of the Bible because it's in a shaded box. Then here starts day two. Again, it's going to pick up at Genesis 3. You're not going to have to go flipping in your book. You just need one bookmark. Um, some of the other ones you're going to need multiple bookmarks or you're going to need to um, buy a new, again, a new Bible to go along with the podcast you may be listening to. This one has it all in one. So this is more like a reader's edition. Um, yeah, they don't call it that, but that's what I'd call it because this is one that you read as you read a regular book. You're going to sit down and read your selection for the day and leave a bookmark. So this is a daily reading book. You're going to sit down. Hey, day two, again, Genesis 3. Um, let's look at some of those footnotes. In Hebrew, you is plural in verses 1 to 5. Or to give insight, uh, Hebrew wind. Again, these are all translation notes that I'm finding so far down in the footnotes. So could you skip them? Yeah, if you're just reading it straight, you could probably skip them. You, you may want to read them, you may not. Again, it's something that if you're reading twice a day, maybe once in the morning, you just read it straight through. Maybe you pause again at lunch or at bedtime and you're gonna read it and you're gonna read the footnotes. You could do that as well. You can make it different ways. Make it your own to your own learning style. If those footnotes are gonna drive you crazy, don't, don't read them. 
The point is to read the Bible in a year. We can always go back and learn more about the translation later. It's not the end of the world there. Um, let's see. I like it when they say down here to translation note, though. It's kind of interesting. Noah sounds like Hebrew for rest. There's a lot of it. This word sounds like the Hebrew word for something. I find that interesting. Oh, over here on page six, it has a note telling you Hebrew, Samaritan, Septuagint, Sirach, and Vulgate add, let us go out to the field. So they are including notes from other translations besides this translation. So the scholarship in this it is here. There's a lot of nerdy notes. If you're a nerd, you're going to love the footnotes. Again, they're right there, so you're not having to go search and read them. This is a reader. If there is a footnote, it's at the bottom of that page. It's a footnote. Um, do you want to read a reflection? Sure. Let's jump in and go into a reflection. Let's look at day 31 because that's the day I'm filming. It's January 31st. And so if you're doing another Bible in your program, you might want to be curious how it aligns. So day 31, again, we find it, the day and the date are always gonna be in the outside corners. The page numbers are in the inside so that you don't get them confused. Day 31 is Exodus 18. We start out with you know Moses' father-in-law, Jethro, giving him some advice. 19, Israel at Mount Sinai. 20, the 10 commandments. Then we have Psalm 28, which is the Lord is my strength and my shield. Matthew 20, where Jesus foretells his death a third time. And then the reflection begins at the bottom of the page. The mother of John and James intercedes for them to Jesus, asking that they be given the top, two top positions in his coming kingdom. Jesus is on his way to Jerusalem, and his disciples have a growing conviction that he is the Messiah, the king who will restore the glory of the Davidic kingdom. They expect that when Jesus comes to Jerusalem, the capital of Israel, a regime change will occur. Like a good mother, she seeks the best for her sons. Of course, things will turn out far differently than what they all expect, which is what Jesus says in reference to the cup he must drink. Least expected of all is that Jesus will be enthroned upon the cross. On his left and his right will be two crucified thieves. Jesus explains that in his kingdom, power is exercised far differently than it is in the world. For if the king makes himself a slave and gives his life as a ransom, those who seek to be his closest associates must be willing to become cruciform in their service to others. Okay, so it gives you a little bit of history. It gives you a little bit of background, right? A little bit of scholarship. Not too heavy, though. It gives you a little bit of it. Um, and then it says, get you started in the reflection. And then there's questions to challenge you through your day. Who do you serve for Christ's sake? And what cup does Christ want you to drink that you may join him in glory? So it gives you some reflection. So if you're doing this first thing in the morning, reading them all and doing your reflection, you can ruminate on it throughout your day. If you're doing it more during lunch or evening, maybe, maybe, oh, if you're doing this at night, you could, or in the afternoon, maybe you do that small examine at noon and a larger daily examine at bedtime, you could include this in your daily examine, those questions. That is a great point. Okay. Because I'm not really a morning person, so that is part of this book that was challenging me, is doing the reflection and do you do it in the morning and ruminate it all day? Because that's not my learning style, like, at all. <laughs> so I like that, that you could include that in your daily exam and later in the day. That's nice. Um, do I have other notes? I had noticed before that sometimes the footnotes didn't give you um, translation notes, but they do appear then if they don't appear there, they may appear in the reflection. The reflection is very short. It's like, I, it's normally one paragraph, but realistically, it's it's two to three paragraphs. It's not very much. It's like a quarter of a page. I'm just randomly flipping through looking. And this is one of the larger ones. Sometimes it is two columns just because they want to really start the next day off, right? They don't want to have like a giant column here and then start the day. No, they want that line. They want it to be a reader edition. I really appreciate this feature here. Um, but that, I mean, that's a fairly longer one. They seem to all, I can't guarantee that they all end with a question, but at least most of them do. Um, yeah, oh, whenever I read it, they do seem to end with a question. So great for your daily examine. Um, now, do we want to go into, I'm going to leave it open. I can, 
open this book up again and do anything you guys want um, if you want a little peek in it. I will say um, we may also want to take a break then and compare it to two of the other very popular series. But let's stop. We have day 251. What do we have for day 251? So the reading is going to be Isaiah 40, Comfort for God's People. I want to read you a little bit of this so that you hear what this translation sounds like. I do think that's important. Comfort for God's People. Comfort, comfort my people, says your God. Speak tenderly to Jerusalem and cry to her that her warfare is ended, that her iniquity is pardoned, that she has received from the Lord's hand double for all her sins. A voice cries, In the wilderness prepare the way of the Lord. Make straight in the desert a highway for our God. Every valley shall be lifted up. Every mountain and hill be made low. The uneven ground shall become level. And the rough places a plain. And the glory of the Lord shall be revealed. And all flesh shall see it together. For the mouth of the Lord has spoken. So we're going to go from Isaiah 40. That day we're also doing chapter 41. It, those are kind of long. Wisdom of Solomon 3. So that one did start at the beginning of a page. So it was all one, two, three. So roughly three and a half pages just for um, the, the Isaiah readings. And then we have Wisdom of Solomon 3. So what was that? Three, four. So they're around four and a half to five sides of a page. Each. Um, and it's going to end with 1 Corinthians 14. Um, do you want me to... 14 and 15. See, it, it takes me a second because instead of having the number big here, they have 14, but then 15 here is really big. I think I would like to see that 14 there big rather than that letter. Again, these are tiny things, but I I like it to be very clear and... and I want to get it right away and they do that i mean like here it's isaiah right sorry isaiah 42 so it said right there i'm not sure about this big letter there um again that's just tiny little semantic do we want to read here the resurrection of christ so first corinthians 15. now i would remind you brothers of the gospel i preached to you which you received in which you stand and by which you are being saved if you hold fast to the word i preached to you unless you believed in vain. Let's see what the reflection is. The major turn in the book of Isaiah comes with the opening verses of chapter 40. Comfort, comfort my people, says your God. Isaiah, that's weird. It says Isaiah equals sign 40 colon one. I feel like that's a typo I just found. That's on page 1019, I don't know. Isaiah switches from primarily foretelling the Lord's judgment on the disobedient to describing his merciful restoration. He sees the Lord coming as a gentle shepherd, see verse 11, and making his people fly like eagles, see verse 31. After judgment comes repentance, and after repentance comes the glorious restoration of God's people. Okay, so this is going to go on. It does again end with a question. It does keep referring you back to the reading. Again, so if you're reading it once in the morning straight through... And then at night, you go ahead and read it with the footnotes and do the reflection and then lead yourself straight into your daily exam. And that's probably the way that I would use this book. Okay, so this is the Bible in a Year, English Standard Version, Catholic Edition by Augustine Institute. The two other big ones out right now are, I mean, I'm doing it in the Dooley Rhymes Holy Bible, but... It's really the new St. Thomas Aquinas' Institute's plan, which you can print off for free. So it's Dr. Taylor Marshall. He has read the Bible in a year for Catholics. And his is a chart. So it's it's very similar, at least in the beginning, to the um, Augustine Institute's one. So you're reading basically an Old Testament, a wisdom literature, and a New Testament reading every day. Now I'm doing it without the class. So I'm not getting any of the footnotes or reflections except what are in the Bible I've chosen to use. And I chose to do that with the Dewey Rhymes version. Now I've looked because I've, I've been doing kind of looking at these each every night to see where they are. And one will get a little bit ahead. And then the next day they catch up. And then the next day it's, it's, 
they're very close at least in the beginning so I feel like it's a similar plan they're just kind of aligning them differently um let's see the other big one right now is father Mike Schmidt's Bible in a year through Ascension Press right and that is <laughs> now I have to find where I can pull it up um it's with father Mike Schmidt's but it's based off of Jeff Cavins' Bible Timeline series and his narrative books. So how does he use it? Of course, there's going to be podcasts that you can listen to. I think that you can do it either on video or you can get it on audio. Um, and they have a chart that you can print out. Now theirs is not the same. In the beginning here on day one, like they're doing Genesis 1 and 2 in Psalm 19. Whereas these, I th feel like both did Genesis 1 and 2 Psalm 1, and then I think they both did something from Matthew, didn't they? Um, let's jump back in here. So I feel like these started, you know, started at the beginning of the Old Testament, the beginning of wisdom, and the beginning of, yeah, the New Testament. Yeah, yeah, that's what they did. And then they kind of worked their way through from there. Those are their starting points. This one is a different take. I feel sometimes, so they have a first reading, a second reading, in a psalm slash proverb slash song. They don't, they don't even call it wisdom literature on the Father Mike Schmitz one. So in their first one, they're starting out in the early world. They're doing those time zones, right? Those times that you get from um, Jeff Cavins' Bible timeline series. So they're starting out in the early world for the first five days. So they're doing Genesis 1 through 11. And mm, wait, <laughs> Father Mike Schmitz starts with Psalm 19 then Psalm 104, then Psalm 136, then Psalm 1, then Psalm 2, and then they go on to the patriarch period, which is still Genesis, but it's matched with Job, and they jump all around Proverbs and Psalms. So if you're doing it with Father Mike Schmitz, having bookmarks is not even going to help you. You're going to have to listen along. You're going to have to print out the chart. You're going to have to take the time to find out where you are every day if you're reading along. That is totally the strength in this. So this system, it just opened up your Bible to the next day, <laughs> which is clearly stated over here. Whether you're doing day one, day two, day three, day four, because you've started randomly in the year, or you've done it legit starting on January 1st and you're looking for the date, is there super easy to find and follow your readings every day? You don't have to worry about that. Your concern is on getting through the Bible in the year, reading it, and, and doing that reflection. Um, even... Okay, so the one I'm doing with the new St. Uh, Thomas Institute with Dr. Taylor Marshall, you can see, okay, ignore these bookmarks back here. This is my Old Testament reading. This is my wisdom literature. This is my New Testament reading. And I just move them through. So I have three bookmarks that I'm moving through the Bible. Um, so this system, if I lose my bookmarks or my paper, I'm completely out of luck and I'll have to search the internet to find that schedule again. Um, that is the risk I took with that. But I didn't have this one yet and I wanted to get started. So that's when I jumped over and did this one. Um, so this, I have my hot little hands on. This is totally an easy reader book. <laughs> like I say, they've got, they've got the nerdy notes if you want the nerdy notes. If you just want to read, they've got just the readings. It's just such a delight to be able to just read it straight through. I know Protestants have had these sort of things for years, right? Where you could just pick it up and read it. This is the first Catholic edition one I've seen. And I do enjoy that. Um, and I'm getting to know the English Standard Version Catholic edition. So it is kind of nice to have it this way. So I'll have read all of them in a year. So I can give you an opinion on the ESV next year. <laughs> And I am, I am keeping this close by. If I'm troubled by a passage or I'm like, that doesn't sound familiar. I mean, it may not be that I don't like it. I just don't understand it or it's not in language I've heard before. I'm coming over here and jumping into this one. And if I'm reading down here, I swear my sweater Bible is here somewhere. I know it's here. The um, Jerusalem Bible that's in the sweater from EWTN is somewhere right here as well. Oh, oh my goodness, I'm looking right at it. It's so weird for a Bible to be wearing a sweater, but this little guy is right here as well. So I can look it up and just compare the different translations and notes if I want to be super nerdy about it. <laughs> and then I remembered how small the print is in the Jerusalem Bible. Okay, so, but if I'm doing it over lunch or I want to look something up, again, an advantage of reading them through first thing in the morning. At lunch, you can do many, any technicalities, looking at the footnotes, looking up a translation that you just weren't sure about, 
or just wanted to expand on like how did somebody else explain it maybe in a different way that speaks to how my brain works better right and then at night reading it again possibly and doing the reflection anyways um, I really like that idea too of doing the reflection at night with your daily exam. So I'm totally geeking out on it. Again, I've been doing it for about two weeks with this guy right next to it, just because this is a totally new translation to me. Um, and so I've been looking things up and comparing them as I do the readings. Those are my thoughts. Let me know if you have any questions, ideas, any feedback, because this is a first edition that they've done. Um, so any feedback that you have, let me know. Otherwise, I'm really excited to do it. I really am to, to get in here. I love that it's a reader's version. Totally the one to take with you on vacation, right? You don't have to worry about downloading anything. You don't have to worry about five million, okay, three bookmarks. You don't have to worry about losing a chart. It's all, it's all right here. You just read it through. <laughs> and it is a Catholic edition. So if you've been tempted by the reader edition Bible New Year's that were Protestant Bibles, be tempted no longer we have our own um and it's lovely it's done by the Augustine Institute so you know you can trust them um Dr. Tim Gray like I'm sure you've done studies by him before so I am really excited to get in and learn more about this program god bless friends <laughs>